Hello, welcome to another episode of Watch Torah Examination. It was two or three days ago that I decided to do this video and I knew exactly what I was going to be saying at the start. Discussing what are the Watch Tower's three most dangerous evils or its greatest evils. And that in and of itself is worthy of discussion. Evil? Why are we discussing the evil of a Christian organization? Because isn't the very basics of Christianity good? Why evil? And it is amazing in and of itself because when I just started this channel, I never imagined it would have gone viral. I know that YouTube is competitive. I never imagined that my channel would have grown this big. I thought it would just, be, just have been a temporary thing. I thought I would just be able to reach my Jamaican friends on Facebook. That was where I advertised the first video. Video one was an introduction. I don't recall what video two was, but video three, the Watchtower's biggest lie. The third video, the Watchtower's biggest lie. And some XJW saw it, posted it on a forum, and it went semi-viral. That was how the channel really started taking off. The Watchtower's biggest lie. That word biggest is important because it means, it suggests at the very onset that it is not their only lie. It means that they have multipli a multiplicity of lies and we're looking on what is the biggest one. That was six years ago. I have done a few videos speaking about the watch, the governing body caught in a lie. So that only recently, just about three or four videos ago, the governing body caught in yet another lie. What's going on? Yesterday, the John Cedars channel puts out a new video. Is this the most glaring example of lying on JW.org? What's going on, Jehovah's Witnesses? Jehovah's Organization? Is this the most glaring example? Meaning, from the very, the in, implied in that topic is that there are other examples. And sure enough, in his preamble to discussing that particular lie, Evans made the point that he actually did a video previous to that with another, with a co-host, where they discussed the Watchtower's frequently asked questions page, where they picked up 50 15 lies from the Watchtower. 15. And then they were to, he was now to feature another amazing. The Watchtower putting on their frequently asked question. Oh boy. A question about. Anyhow. I placed the link. Some of you may have seen the video. I've placed the link in the description. Let, let's get on to the meat of the matter. There are so many things about this organization that are evil. And I decided to do a video looking on the three greatest evil. It's a challenge to determine what are their three greatest evils. But then there is another channel, another challenge. <laughs> How do you rank them? Which is the greatest? Because there are so many things wrong with this organization. One of them I just discussed. They're lying. 
so so I will list what the three evils are and then we can discuss which is the greatest of the three or how do we rank them one, two, three. But the first one is the pedophile problem. It's a it's a it's a massive evil. When a child is sexually molested, they are damaged for life. I promised I'm going to be reading one of the stories from the Australian Royal Commission and comment on it. I haven't gotten around to it yet. I still will be doing it. But this young lady was molested in her teen years and she was not she was not raped i mean there was no penetration this man performed oral sex on her and he looked on her a few times when she was naked and stuff like that kissed her tongue kissed her these are the things that she dealt with and it it, it affected her psychologically into her adulthood a difficult thing to deal with not to mention if it were a child if it was when she was younger and the act involved penetration you you damage someone for life and the worst person that you can hurt is a child no wonder jesus said it is better if you are drowned in the sea than for what is going to happen to you when he brings retribution on you for hurting children. And it is bad enough that the Watchtower's policies, and I want to, for Jehovah's Witnesses who are watching, I want you to understand that I understand that sexual sins is prevalent among mankind. It has been a problem with man from beginning until now. So that every church has people, individuals who are sexual deviants. But when the policies of the organization are such that the sexual deviant is the one who is protected and the victim is the one who is hurt, it is the own. There's a word I use a few times with this organization, but it seems like the best word I can use, diabolical. It is so evil what the organization is allowing to happen to children, and then they double down on it to add inf insult to injury, to add fuel to fire, the refusal to do right by them. So much so that the Australian government has to be chastising the Watchtower organization in Parliament. Now, don't get me wrong. It is no big deal for a Christian church to be chastised by government if what they're being chastised for is a principle that the church holds to that the world despises. For example, the Bible teaches that homosexuality is sin. The church teaches that homosexuality is sin. I can understand if a Christian church is being chastised in parliament for its stance against homosexuality. That you can understand. The church has one view. The state has another. But for the government to be more sympathetic of what has been happening to children than a Christian organization is hard to fathom. Very hard to fathom. It is an evil that the organization is perpetuating on children. And it, is, it certainly ranks of one of their top three evils. The second one 
is the blood transfusion issue. I thought about playing the clip and decided not to. I just don't want to bore you with the same thing over and over. But I cannot stop thinking about a mother who would say that she thought it was God's will to let her baby die. How do you get to a place where you can get a mother, a mother who is willing to let her baby die in the name of religion? I spoke commenting on a Watchtower video with this young couple at newlyweds who just became parents. I spoke about how agonizing it was for me when my baby was sick. Sick meaning having the flu and the fever. Sorry about that. I had to interrupt to ask my neighbors upstairs. There were children are stomping on the floor. And the interesting thing is that you don't hear it. When, I, when it happens, I don't hear it if I watch the video on my cell phone. But if I ever listen to it in a headphone, it is horrible. It happened again. Anyhow, I was saying that when my baby has a fever, it is so hard to handle. Can you imagine hearing the news that the baby is going to die? Not to mention you thinking it is God's will for the baby to die? How does a Christian organization get to the place where they can get mothers to think like that? The death of your children. Evil number two, the blood policy that has sent many Jehovah's Witnesses, how many, no one knows, to their graves. Evil. And number three, the shunning, the watchtower's shunning policy. I had a dream about two nights ago that a brother spoke with me. And when I woke up and realized it was just a dream, it was unfortunate. I have a brother, and by a brother, I don't mean a blood relative. A church brother who was a good friend of mine, or so I thought, who has cut me off. The man just will not speak with me. I send him hello. He sees my message. He doesn't respond. How are you? He doesn't respond. And it is not a nice feeling. And especially when I consider why. Because I publicly stated that the teaching of the SDA church on tithing is false. That is my sin. The man has nothing to do with me. And it hurts. It hurts that someone that you had comradery with, that you worked with, that you had a good relationship with, would just... It is... It hurts to discover that it was all fake. There, there was no genuine love there because that's what it comes down to. Ladies and gentlemen, I am talking about one person. I cannot even imagine. You know, sometimes when you cannot empathize with a situation because you've been there, you would say, I can only imagine. I cannot even imagine what it must be like for a Jehovah's Witness to have all 
their contacts, their circle of influence, all the people that they love and hold dear. Because Jehovah's Witnesses believe that the dearest people to them are Jehovah's Witnesses. And so when you have the dearest people to you, not just one, not just two, not just three, but all of them, including your mother, including your father, including your siblings, cutting you off, not talking to you, treating you as though you were dead. And the, the, one of the most interesting things about it is how the Watchtower organization chastised the Catholic Church for the very same thing. And now they embrace it as a tool to keep Jehovah's Witnesses in the evil. So those are the three what I consider of all the watchtowers evils and it is sad as I've said. It's like it cannot be said often enough. It is sad that you are discussing a Christian religion and you can associate so many things with it that are evil. Well, of all the watchtowers evil, those are what I consider to be the top three evils. But the next question is, how do they rank? And I will close by making a contrast. People often ask the question, what manner of man is this? Jesus. What manner of man is this? He turned water into wine. What manner of man is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. What manner of man is this? When he raised Jairus' daughter and moved on to raise Lazarus, what manner of man is this? Jairus' daughter, Jairus' daughter, he told the crowd, was just asleep. She had just died. Lazarus began to decompose. Four days. Raised him from the dead. What manner of man is this? But do you know what was one of the most profound moments of Jesus' life? When they hung him on that cross. Or if Jehovah's Witnesses prefer to say, on that torture stake. When he hung there with nails in his hands and his feet, with a spear in his side, or at least a wound from a spear in his side, a crown of thorns on his head with blood coming from it, and he is being mocked by his crucifiers. When he said, that moment when he said, Father, Forgive them, for they know not what they do. A soldier must have asked himself the question, What manner of man is this? Before he gave the answer, Truly, this was the Son of God. The more you ponder the question, what manner of religion is this? There is one conclusion that comes to me. Certainly, this is a product of Satan. Hello, Winston here. Just telling you thanks for tuning in for this video and encouraging you to subscribe to the channel. Be sure to hit the bell so that you will be notified when new content is uploaded. There is more to clicking the like button than just suggesting you enjoyed the video. The more likes that a video gets, the more YouTube shows it to non-subscribers. And the more that happens, the more Jehovah's Witnesses are reached. 
the videos have proven to help Jehovah's Witnesses so that one little act can go a far way. So go ahead, click that like button. It helps. Love you all. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Thank you.